this is Warehouse Crush Wednesday. I am Bronwyn Scrivens. I guide businesses through the process of purchasing and leasing industrial real estate throughout Alberta. Today, I'm gonna to do a brief overview of the industrial land market in the greater Edmonton area. It's a, an area a lot of my clients like to keep tabs on. Um, within 2021, there were probably about 15 or 20 land sales that happened in the greater metropolitan area of Edmonton. Only about six or seven of those were within the city of Edmonton itself. The majority of those were in the periphery markets for a number of reasons that most people are aware of, but primarily for lower property taxes, uh, lower land cost per acre, um, improved permitting timelines, and just more availability of land for small to large businesses that are looking to develop. Now, depending on the specs of the land, you know, if it's, this is assuming fully serviced land, by the way, but it's, uh, depending on the specs of the land for whether it has full crush, whether it's prepped, whether it's graded, whether it's fenced, exposure, um, there's ranges within each market for those, for those reasons. So within the city of Edmonton, you're looking at probably 650 to 850 per acre. Within Atchison, which is just west of the city, you're probably in the 450 to 550 per acre. Nisku and Leduc, which is just south of the city, you're probably in the 450 to 650, depending on where you're looking in the park. And then for markets like Shore Park, you're probably in the 650 to 700, St. Albert, 600 to 650, uh, and then Spruce Grove, you're down into the 350s per acre. So a lot of range, depending on where you're looking around the city of Edmonton. Um, one thing I really want people to be aware of is that if you are looking to buy land or even a lot of industrial buildings, you really need to check yourself or have your broker check if there are any outstanding levies or assessments on the land. These are applied by the city or the county when they're doing you know, road work or putting in water mains and they proportionally split the costs on all the landowners in the area. But if a owner doesn't pull a permit for a long time, which does happen quite a bit in industrial parks, there could be outstanding levies or assessments from years ago that are not triggered until a development permit is pulled. So you really want to make sure that you know what those costs are before you finalize a purchase contract. That's it for this week of Warehouse Crush Wednesday with Bronwyn Scribbins and I hope that was helpful and I will see you guys next Wednesday.